Um, and good morning, everybody, on Facebook. Good to be with you this morning. 1010 uh, on this Tuesday, uh, February 9th. February 9th, uh, sunny morning, cold, uh, feels great outside, um, feels like winter. So uh, good to be with you this morning uh, as, we, uh, as we gather together. Uh, morning, Jennifer. Uh, good to see you. Uh, and I'm sure it's good to be seen. Morning, Joe. Hope the legs are okay. Hope you're able to get up and walk. Morning, Lou. Um, it's a little slick out there yet. You don't want to be walking around, I don't think, outside. Hi, Deb. I hope you have your head down, I'm assuming. Um, morning, Birdie. Good to be with you. Uh, we are in Acts chapter 20 today, uh, 2032, 2032, uh, to 21, 4, uh, 21, yeah, 21, 4, uh, yeah, good to, good to see all of you this morning, um, give it a minute or so more, a few seconds more, and see if we get anybody else jumping on, uh, here today, on this, Beautiful sunny day. Hope you enjoyed that snowfall yesterday morning, Gene. Um, that is what they call champagne powder. It's so cold and the air is dry and it's so white and fluffy. Morning, Carol. Uh, good to be with you this morning. Um, so it was <coughs> it was great. Uh, did a little cross country skiing yesterday um, down at Waterfall Glen. Rachel and I. Um, it was just beautiful. Uh, saw a bunch of deer and uh, were able to be outside, so it was really nice. All right, we are uh, in Acts, continuing our, our look at the book of Acts. Acts chapter uh, 20 uh, is where we find ourselves today. Uh, but before we get to Acts, we, we, we want to build, uh, build out our, our time together this morning around uh, some thoughts uh, that God places in our hearts and our minds and um, before we get to those though this morning, it's just kind of a question for you. <laughs> uh, ever feel like you're barely hanging on? Um, <laughs> and as I look at the list this morning, I'm guessing there may be a few people saying, yeah, keeps one thing after another after another. Uh, life is, is difficult. Uh, and you wonder how much more you can take, uh, like how much longer you can, you can hold on. Um, and I, as, I, as I read that and thought about that this morning, uh, the thought popped into my mind, maybe sometimes we're holding on to the wrong things, uh, to the things of this world. Morning, Joyce. Um, and, um, you know, and, and we are forgetting uh, the things of, of God. And, and I think that can be a, a problem for us because the things of this day, I mean, uh, and this, the things of this world are, are here today and gone tomorrow. And we, we place a lot of emphasis and impact on that. And, and, and it feels like, wow, it's just slipping through our hands. And yet, um, we can be people who are holding on to God's word and God's promises. Uh, and that's where, where true relief, uh, true security is, is found. Um, and uh, I think the words of Scripture today really draw us uh, to that. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read these words uh, from Psalm 56, verse 10. Um, it says, I will praise God's word. I will praise the Lord's word. You see, we've got a God who is faithful and who is true and who is good and who calls us into relationship with, with him. And, and the psalmist understood that. The psalmist, uh, you know, obviously understood life is difficult. There are struggles along the way. And he said, I will praise God's word. I will praise the Lord's word because he is the one who has provided for me. He is the one who cares for me. He is the one who actually holds on to me amidst the troubles and the difficulties of life. And Timothy, or Paul writes to Timothy, his, his friend in 2 Timothy 1, 4, guard the good treasure entrusted to you. 
with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. Paul reminds Timothy, we've got to guard what has been given to us, this, this truth, God's Word, that He won't ever leave us or forsake us. Uh, God's Word that, that says we are made new in Christ, that we who are dead have been made alive. God's Word and promise that nothing in all of creation can separate us from the love that He has for us in Christ Jesus. So you're barely hanging on? <laughs> well, we need to be people who are turning to God's Word and God's promise to give us what we truly, truly need. And, and we need the Spirit to do that. Uh, because on our own, we, we tend to hold on to the things of this world. We tend to miss out on what God is having to say to us. We can get so caught up in the things of this world that we miss out on what God is actually doing. And that is Paul's prayer uh, to Timothy and t Timothy, uh, Paul's prayer to us. Guard the good treasure. The good treasure that's been given to us. God's promise made to us in our baptism that we are his, that we belong. That nothing, nothing in all creation uh, can separate us from God's love. Uh, and, and we need the help of the Holy Spirit uh, to in, or, in order for us to, to really hold on uh, to that, to cling to it. Well, as we turn to our, our continuing saga with Paul in the book of Acts, uh, we see he's finishing up uh, what is known as the secondary, second missionary journey. He's heading back uh, to Jerusalem. Now, Paul has undergone, undergone quite a quite a, a number of, of ups and downs so far on this journey. There have been some really powerful things where God has been at work. Uh, I think back over the jailer and his family being baptized uh, as, the, as, as the walls came tumbling down out of that, crumbling down out of that jail um, and new life was given. Uh, we've seen how Paul has been accused and has been uh, uh, thrown out of, of, of cities and had to move on and run away and hide. Um, so I, I'm sure there are times where Paul just feels like he's barely hanging on, barely holding on. And yet, uh, in the middle of all of this, one of the things that Paul does is he models the life uh, that God has given to us. Uh, he models the Jesus life, if you will, of up, in, and out. And we've talked about this before. Uh, when we are focused on God's word and God's promise, we can emulate or imitate the life that God wants for us. And that's when we're truly, truly blessed. And so we see that playing out in this section of Acts uh, chapter, chapter 20. Uh, we're going to start at the verse 32 uh, and go to 21 verse 4. So verse 20, Acts uh, 2032. Uh, Paul, if you remember, has been has been praying. Uh, he's saying farewell to the Ethiopian church or the Ephesian Ephesians church, uh, and um, these are his words. Uh, if you'll remember uh, reading those uh, this this past week, uh, and now he continues this this prayer. So beginning at verse thirty two. Now I commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. I have not coveted anyone's silver or gold or clothing. You yourselves know that these hands of mine have supplied my own needs and the needs of my companions. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. When he said this, he knelt down with all of them and prayed. They all wept as they embraced him and kissed him. What grieved them the most was his statement that he would never see his, they would never see his face again. Then they accompanied him to the ship. After we had torn ourselves away from them, we put out to sea 
and sail straight to Kos. The next day we went to Rhodes and there and from there to Petria. We found a ship crossing uh, to Phoenicia, went on board and set sail. After sighting Cyprus and passing to the south of it, we sailed on to Syria. We landed at Tyre where our ship was to unload its cargo. Finding the disciples there, we stayed with them seven days. Through the Spirit, they urged Paul not to go on to Jerusalem. So we see Paul modeling for the church at Ephesus, which I'm sure he did throughout his time there. We know he was there for two years, uh, teaching and preaching, a living life uh, with uh, the people there, discipling uh, the people there, uh, both uh, both living a life of uh, 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 that was a, a life that that was organized uh, as they, they met together in the temple, but was also organic as they just lived life together. I mean, it says Paul here worked. He worked to support himself. So there was this, this both this organized and organic way of living life with the disciples there. And it was in this time that, that Paul was teaching and, and training them to be imitators of his life as he imitated Christ. You see, Paul's whole desire was that, that as he left, he was making disciples who would be able to make disciples. Uh, and that's really always been Jesus' goal. That's the, the goal of the church is to be disciples who make disciples. And, it, and it's intentional. It just doesn't happen by giving information. Paul lived life with them. And they were able then to gather information, but also see how to imitate the life that Paul was living. And it, it was a, a life that imitated the life of Christ. We see Paul living this up, in, and out kind of life. As we read these words, he, he gathered them. I now commit you to God and to the word of his grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. So, so Paul is gathering and focusing uh, the folks in an up relationship with, with God. He talks about when we see this, this in relationship, how, how the church was just, oh, oh, saddened to see him go. They, they cried and embraced. They wouldn't let him go uh, because they had developed such a, a bond uh, with, with one another. They were in, uh, in, joined together. Uh, but it wasn't just for the sake of in or up, but it was also for the sake of out. Uh, as Paul says, we, we need to be people who are ready to give of ourselves. And not just, just money, but our very, our very lives. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And so Paul modeled this life. Um, and, 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 and as he did, uh, he was able to move on and, and recognize that these people were ready to, to disciple others, to really live this life that God had in store for them that they wouldn't just be hanging on by a thread, <laughs> uh, but were holding on to the very promises of God and living those out in their day-to-day -day life. And it was impacting them, and it was also impacting others. And so today, uh, remember those, those verses that we, that we read earlier. I will praise God's word. I will praise the Lord's word. That we hang on to the promises of God, even in, in difficult times. And as we model this life, this Jesus life of up, in, and out, uh, so that we can truly experience God's word in our lives and share it uh, with, with others. Uh, we know, uh, certainly, uh, today that there are those who are, who are struggling, uh, those who are hurting, those who are barely hanging on. Um, and we, we pray for them now, uh, that they would hold on, as, as Paul prayed, that they would hold on uh, to God's word to the treasure entrusted to them, uh, and that they would know they're not alone as the Holy Spirit comes uh, to them. We pray for, for Laura and Christine, uh, Jenny Shirley's mom, who's dealing with COVID, recovering from COVID. We pray for those who are dealing with cancer, for Tom and Rich and Mary Ellen, uh, Kathy Hopp's sister. Uh, pray for those who are sick and recovering. We pray for, uh, for Deb um, and Sue in their recovery. 
uh, for Jerry, uh, for Janet. I know she went under underwent some uh, procedures this past week. Uh, we pray for Joe uh, as he's recovering from uh, falling. We also pray for the Cahill family. Uh, they've been through a lot. I saw the baby uh, Casey yesterday. He was in the uh, NICU, NICU. Um, had some issues over the weekend. And so we pray uh, that all would, would go well with them. I believe the baby is doing, doing okay. And they're just waiting on some test results, but hopefully can go home uh, tomorrow. Um, so let me go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, we come to you today holding on, holding on to your word and your promise, for you are a God who, who keeps his word. You are a God who gives us what we, we truly need, the treasure, uh, the treasure of our inheritance, that, that Jesus died and rose again. And because of that, we who were dead in our trespasses and sins have been made alive. We have life now, and we have the promise of life for all of eternity. We recognize how quickly life passes, Lord, and yet you are with us every step of the way. And we just ask, Lord, that you would help us to be, whole, help us to be people who hold on to this truth, the truth of your word that says we are loved and we belong and that you will never leave us or forsake us, that nothing can separate us from you, not anything that we face in this life. We are joined and connected to you through Jesus' death and his resurrection. And because he lives, we have the hope of life now and life eternal. Help us to model that, Lord, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, to be people who live it up, in, and out, focused on your word, focused on fellow believers, focused on those outside the fellowship. And where, and where there is difficulty within, Lord, help us to work those things out, that we can, can work together as, as your church, uh, as your people, uh, ready to forgive as we have been forgiven, ready to work uh, together to, to carry out the mission. Uh, today we pray for those who are struggling. We really pray for uh, baby Casey today, Lord, that this test would come back negative and that he could go home, uh, be with his mom and dad. I know they're, they're worn out and they're tired, barely hanging on, Lord. They've been through so much. Uh, give them uh, a time of peace and a time of, to settle uh, both inwardly and outwardly, Lord. Uh, we just ask for that for them. Uh, we pray for the sick, for Steb and Sue in the recovery, for Jerry, uh, Janet, Joe, uh, those who are dealing with cancer, Tom and Rich and Mary Ellen. We pray for uh, Laura and Christine and their continued battle with uh, COVID-19, all who are dealing with the ramifications of that. We continue to pray, Lord, for a smooth uh, transition into uh, vaccination uh, that we could begin to to move forward um, and just pray your blessing on that, Lord. Um, it will be uh, an interesting challenge as we seek to, to carry on with life. Um, help us to live with courage. Uh, help us to live with, with, uh, with common sense uh, as we seek to live in this time, but not to be defined uh, by this time, uh, just to be defined by you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, for these things and so much more, uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you guys have a good day. Uh, good to be with you all this morning. Um, and enjoy the sunshine today. Uh, and we will see you tomorrow. Uh, take care. God's bless. God bless. Bye-bye.